Good morning folks, welcome along to the vlog. Today's a Friday, but as it happens we've got obviously the control panel build started in the workshop behind you, but we do have to wait for the sticker to arrive and the heat sink and a few other things. So what we're going to do today is make a start on the boil pots, namely the HLT and the boil kettle and that means installing some elements. So here we have the SS Brewtech 20 gallon brew kettle and of course it's sat nicely in our very freshly fabricated brew stand and the next task is for us to install some elements into the boil kettle so we can boil of course. So what I've done is I've taken the liberty of putting the kettle into the stand so we can see that we're not going to foul any areas on the back of the cradle with the element tri-clamps. So if I just take this piece of chalk, I'm pretty sure if we scribe around the top and the bottom like that, and then just do a couple of lines down the side, then we know that we've got a safe area for installing the elements. And likewise, on the HLT, we're pretty safe with that because there are there is no cradle for us to have to avoid. So I'm going to take this into the workshop now after I've cleared a bench and then we're going to go ahead and uh, make some holes in the pot and install the tri-clamp fittings. So we have the pot on the workbench now in the workshop and what we're going to be attaching is this or well, these components. So essentially what we've got here is a three inch tri-clamp fitting, as they're commonly known, which comes in one co uh, in several components, should I say. Uh, first of all, your clamp, and then two ferrules, like so. Those are well binded, and a gasket or a seal. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these ferrules and we're going to weld that onto the tank, like that. Which means we can then connect the other ferrule, which we're going to weld to two and a quarter inch BSP half socket. These are all available from GC Supplies. And uh, if you speak to Andy there, he'll be able to point you in exactly the right direction. And just by sheer luck, the two and a quarter inch BSP socket fits the OD of the tri-clamp ferrule so we're going to go ahead and weld these two together later on but our main activity today is to house the two ferrules on the pot in the correct locations ensuring that the elements don't clash on the inside so when the elements this is the reason we're putting the BSP sockets on. They screw, the elements screw perfectly into these BSP sockets and we can use the Incloy or stainless steel immersion heating elements which are readily available from places like Screwfix and Toolstation for less than 20 quid. Now the glory about that is if we have a mishap and we burn out an element it's a 20 quid replacement and when we finished a brew day we can disconnect the tri-clamp take our elements away to the sink and we can clean them without having to get inside the pot and trying to clean the elements by hand that way we can just do it at our leisure on a, on a bench or at the sink so we've got the BSP element threaded into the BSP socket, into the tri-clamp, onto the other tri-clamp ferrule and into the tank. So we want to make sure that in the tank we don't have the elements touching each other like this. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is we'll install the first one, we'll do a dry fit of an element through the first hole 
and that will dictate to us where the second hole is going to go. So I'm pretty sure that these two marks I've put on the back of the kettle indicate that that's our outer limits as far as we can go with these. And with it being a 20 gallon kettle, we might just have plenty of room on the inside for the elements to miss each other anyway. So just by having a quick play around with a spare element that I've got, I think if that's mounted in there like that, and we've got another one around here, I actually am pretty confident that they'll miss each other. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the two elements on the same level at the, uh, at the base of the pot. So we're gonna go and just draw a line across here where we think it's gonna be golden, and we'll stick the elements in there. So one of the more important tasks when fitting a ferrule to a tank is to take into account the radius of the tank. So if we look at this ferrule on the right, you'll see that it wobbles around quite a lot. That's because the bottom of that ferrule is flat and of course the tank is convex. So it's rocking side to side. So what I've done is taken a flapper disc on a grinder such as this bad boy and we've gone ahead and just taken away a slight radius of the disc can you see that there so when it's on the tank in the correct orientation it sits relatively solid on all sides so I've done that with two of these so far as you can see they sit a little bit lower on the tank, but they don't rock off as much. So I just need to finish this off because it's just got a little bit, a little bit of a tweak onto it. But if I move it there, it doesn't. So there we go. I think that one's done. This one needs to be done now. We only have to do this on one of the ferrules, so of course, because the other ferrule is going to go on there and then be welded onto the BSP nut or socket like so. So I'm just utilizing one of the clamps to try and find the best center value. So obviously we're never gonna mount it like that. If it was on a, on, on a base, it would foul the floor. But just by rotating the clamp, you can see that now we've got space and we're not gonna hit, you know, we're not, uh, at beyond the bottom of the pot, which is what I'm trying to say. So I'm quite happy that that position for the element will be will be spot on. So I'm just going to take that line now, and uh, by holding the piece of chalk in my hand and resting my little finger on the pot, I'm going to transcribe that mark all the way around to where the second element is going to go what we can do is pick up our freshly trimmed down um, ferrules we'll stick it on the tank like that so it it fits nicely and then I'm going to draw around the inside of the ferrule being careful not to make the hole too big so I don't have to fill any marks or any gaps in and then I'm going to do the same on this side we'll just rotate it until it sits nicely which is about there I'm happy with that and I'm going to go along around the inside again and there we go we've got two marks now ready for cutting out with the laser cutter or pretty much whatever cutter you've got and I'm just going to put my hand in the inside and get a feel for it and I think we're far enough off the bottom of the pot to uh, not cause any problems there on both sides because the inside of this pot does have a bit of a radius but yeah I'm happy with that so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to make our first cut so I've insulated the inside of the pot 
with a grain sack to prevent any of the sparks from the plasma torch making a mess in there and we're going to go ahead and cut the first of the holes out so I'm just looking for my gloves this is always a nerve-wracking moment where's the other glove See so the compressor is about to kick on it's about to get loud and we're about to make some sparks don't mind if I do governor straight in We have hole number one. So I've cleaned up the holes as best I can with the die grinder and we are now ready to move across to the welding bench where we will indeed get these fittings welded to the tanks.